welcome to the next session of the course metrology and instrumentation today we are discussing about abyss principle or otherwise known as otherwise known as uh, amplification the problem of amplification of angular errors okay so this was uh, given by dr ernst abbe in 19th century and his work on this leads to what is referred to as the abyss principle okay the abyss principle is defined as if the errors in parallax are to be avoided the measuring system must be placed coaxially with the axis along which displacement is to be measured on the workpiece so uh, here uh, we have got two things that is one is the measuring system so this measuring system that is the portion of uh, a measuring instrument which is actually uh, used for taking the measurement that is the measuring system and that must be placed the coaxially with the axis along with the displacement need to be measured so we are measuring some quantity maybe a displacement maybe a dimension uh, something like that so that uh, our measuring system must be placed coaxially with the axis along the distance to be measured so what quantity we are measuring that quantity should be in coaxial with the measuring system so that is the simplest uh, explanation of this abyss principle uh, so that is actually given in this line the line of measurement should coincide with the measuring line of instrument so that is a simplified definition of abyss principle and here we can uh, later we are actually considering two familiar measuring instruments one is vernier caliper and the other one is micrometer and in this case uh, the vernier caliper is considered as an instrument which uh, violates abyss principle which is not obeying the abyss principle so it has got some uh, problem in measurement and on the other hand micrometer is considered as an instrument which obeys abyss principle so that's why micrometer will give a more accurate reading compared to vernier caliper the figure shows a setup for measuring the run out of a bearing run out of a bearing this one is the bearing so we need to measure the run out of the bearing run out means uh, if this is the bearing okay and uh, we are assuming that it is very concentric but in actual practice it is not concentric it has got a certain amount of eccentricity so because of the eccentricity while rotating what will happen we will have a slight deflection in this direction so this deflection has to be measured and this deflection is referred as run out okay a slight uh, variation in the circularity while rotating so that is the run out so run out has to be measured uh, we are using a dial gauge for measuring this run out and the setup is like this uh, we are fixing the bearing over a mantle and this mantle is actually fitted in between centers in the setup and we are rotating this one with our hand and uh, while rotating uh, this plunger of the dial gauge has got a movement in this direction okay vertical movement to and fro vertical movement is there so it will either move upwards or move downwards so that deflection is shown over the dial so we are measuring uh, how much is will be the deflection so that is the basic idea behind the measurement of run out uh, but uh, we know that the run out is actually perpendicular to the axis of rotation of the workpiece so this is the uh, moment of run out so it should be perfectly perpendicular 
So we are using a dial gauge. Okay, it will be like this. I will erase this one first. Okay. So uh, for measurement, the condition is that we should this is the axis, so it should be perfectly perpendicular to the axis of the rotation. Uh, so we need to fix this puncture perpendicular, exactly perpendicular to the axis of the bearing. But in actual practice, that is very difficult. Exactly fitting perpendicular because you can see that here the dial gauge is fixed on a stand. So the making this stand exactly 90 degree, making exactly 90 degree over here with the parallel to the axis. If it is be perfectly 90 degree, then it's okay. But making 90 degree, there is no data available, so it is very difficult to make it. Uh, 90 degrees. So, some cases uh, instead of per perpendicularity, it may have some angularity. So, this angularity because of this angularity, we may not get the exact deflection. So, the deflection may vary because of this angularity error. So, that angularity error is actually represented by Abe's principle. So, Abe's what is he is telling? He is telling that. Uh, we need to have some ex excess adjustments or excess framework is required uh, to have to make this uh, gauge exactly 90 degree. Otherwise, there will always associate it some with some error. There is no mathematical proof. We are not studying any mathematical proof of this Habe's principle. We are just uh, discussing about the concept behind Habe's principle. Now let's consider the example, the first example of vernier caliper, how it is not obeying the Abbe's principle. So uh, we can see that this is the axis of measurement. Okay, what we are doing, we are actually measuring a diameter of a shaft using the uh, jaws of a vernier caliper and this is the line of measurement. Okay. But what is actually happening? Uh, that is a measurement. But here the scale, the line of the scale is lying over here. So the scale is here and the line of measurement is here. It is not coinciding. It has got an offset at this much distance. That's why this instrument is not obeying the Abbe's principle. Uh, because of this offset, what will happen? There is a chance of uh, jaw of this one get reflected in this direction. So it may deflect in this direction. So that deflection will affect the accuracy of the reading. So uh, generally we believe that vernier calipers are comparatively lesser accurate compared to micrometers. And in contrast, if we consider a micrometer, here we can tell that the scale of measurement this is the scale of measurement and this is the line of measurement okay here we are placing the workpiece so the workpiece axis is exactly coincide with the scale of the measurement so both having the same axis also there is coinciding and there is no chance of deflection because we have provided a strong frame over here here we have got a strong frame. Because of this frame, we are now coinciding the line of measurement and line of the scale. So this one is obeying the Abbe's principle and there is no error. There is no angular error in this case. So by comparing these two conditions that is the vernier caliper and the micrometer we can conclude that uh, micrometer is obeying the Abbe's principle and vernier caliper is actually not obeying the Abbe's principle so by this uh, we are stopping here thank you for watching